What does manhood mean to you? Wow. That's a deep first question. <laughs> so manhood, being a man, means responsibility. It, re it, it reminds me of an old saying about the king taking care of the village. I think that we were all intended as men to be the nurturers of communities, the nurturers of people. And I think being a man that just comes natural, you know, wanting to be around the boys and raise the boys and wanting to see the whole village grow. So manhood to me really means responsibility and taking care of your community. Hi, and welcome to another edition of King Crush Thursday, the series where we highlight and uplift Black men, because frankly, not too many people are doing it. My name is Val Gay, and I'm super excited about this brother, because he is a long time coming. He is an artist. He is an entrepreneur. He's a community activist, and he is a proud native of Chester, Pennsylvania. His name is Mr. Devin Walls. Hey, Devin. Hey, what's up, Val? How you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm good, good. Glad okay. to finally be here with you. Thank you. I'm glad that you are finally here with me. <laughs> and so, Devin, um, this conversation really is about breaking open the very myopic and narrowly defined narratives around Black manhood. As you know, as I know, that Black men far exceed all of the stereotypes and all of the very narrow depictions that we see typically in media in our society. And our goal really is to shatter all those old myths and to shatter those old and narrow um, definitions. As one brother eloquently put it, 95% of the brothers that we know are doing the right things, holding it down, taking care of their families, all of those things, being positive in their communities. And sadly, 95% of the media coverage is of the 5% who are not doing those things. And so we want to shift, we want to shift that ratio. And I like so, that. Yeah, thank you. And so the goal also, too, is ultimately for a young king who may or may not have positive black male role models in his life to come to this repository, see these same six questions answered by well over 100 men to hopefully find guidance there. And then for the rest of us who are neither male or even black, for us to be able to look at this, this, uh, this repository and see these questions and have our minds be opened up and expand it and perhaps start to think differently about the the people that we see around us every day. Or many of us see black men around us every day. Some of us don't see black men at all. So maybe we'll have different expectations or different um, thoughts about them. The shame on them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And so with that, I want to get started with the first question, which is, what does manhood mean to you? Wow. That's a deep first question. <laughs> so manhood, being a man, means responsibility. It, re it, it reminds me of an old saying about the king taking care of the village. I think that we were all intended as men to be the nurturers of communities, the nurturers of people. And I think being a man that just comes natural, you know, wanting to be around the boys and raise the boys and wanting to see the whole village grow. So manhood to me really means responsibility and taking care of your community. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. So Levin, who and or what is important to you? Uh, who is important to me? Family is very important to me. You know, you can't talk about taking care of a village if you're not taking care of your own household. It just doesn't quality right so me spending time with my boys with my children with my personal family is ultimately important to me but also showing the external families in the community how i am with my family is important as well 
That's great. That's excellent. So how do you want us to see you? Look, as a man, it's, you know, a lot of the time when you're doing the stuff that I do, it's not many people in the community that does it. So people tend to try to put me up on a pedestal and they get these huge expectations of me and they forget that I'm still a man. I'm still a, a guy from the community. I always say I'm just a kid from Chester. You know, so when they put you up on a pedestal, then you don't make or you don't reach their full expectations. You know, it's almost set up a failure. So I just want people to see me as a neighbor, as a friend, as a family member, but as a man first. That's awesome. I get that. So, so what is your epic dream? Sure. Dream. Your epic dream. Yeah. So... I, I have this thing, like growing up in, in my family, in my household, we had a, a real connection to Africa. A lot of my family members go back and forth to the village there where our family is from. And my uncle had a dream of connecting the African-Americans here to the countryside in Africa. So I think my epic dream is to fulfill that dream, which is a family dream. It's not really just mine. You know, because as a kid, I really didn't see the value in it. But now I see the value. That's why I've been taking these trips to different countries, meeting our people. I think that's my epic dream, to have a house there, have a teaching institution there, help build schools there, help develop neighborhoods the same as I'm doing here, but on a whole different level there because I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it for the village. Wow. That's amazing. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you. So question five is, Mr. Denon Walls, who are you? <laughs> well, I think that answered the question. I'm Mr. Devin Walls. I'm Devin Walls Sr. I have a Devin Walls Jr. as well. You know, um, just a kid from Chester who has these goals that I want to reach. I think they're more goals than dreams to me, and I've been knocking them down week by week, day by day, year by year. I'm just a guy who wants to see better for our people. You know, I grew up listening to the stories and wondering where our 40 acres and our mules were. And I come to the realization that in order to get those things, we have to work ourselves to get them and bring them to the community. I think it's my job to show the people what the 40 acres and the mule looks like so they'll have more energy and more uh, more reasons to get up and work towards it because we're waiting on those 40 acres in those rooms instead of going and get them and instead of going and take them, you know, right now, I'm on it. if it's ours, we're taking it and we'll deal with the consequences of our actions. Later. That's why. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for that. And here we are already at question six, which is, is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't, or you wanted me to ask you that I didn't? In other words, what did I miss? Well, you know me enough to ask me all the questions. <laughs> I don't know if you missed anything or you just didn't ask a certain thing. But if I had to say, if I had a question for myself, I think the question would be my why I keep on going after all of the roadblocks, all of the detours, all of the setbacks. And I think my simple answer would be we're worth it. We're worth it. And if anything steps in front of you, you got to figure a way to go over it or through it. And I get the question a lot of times, why you're still wrong? You had so many things against you. Your city government was against you. They sent everybody there to destroy you. Why? And if you look at all of the leaders in the past, a lot of them died for their why. You know, a lot of the people that we could be asking this question aren't here to answer it because they pushed their self to the limit of their why. And I think I'm doing the same thing. There's nothing that you're going to be able to place in front of me that's going to stop my why, my reason. My children need to see better. My community needs to see better. And in order for them to see that, they have to see somebody that looks like them striving to make things better. So my why is all of the eyes that are around me watching, you know, whether they're mine or they belong to somebody else. I have a lot of eyes on me. And my whys are like, if he doesn't stop, it gives them more energy to keep going. Oh my goodness, I hear that. 
You're here. Amen. Amen. That's amazing. Um, I'm so grateful for you and your why and your work that you do. You know, I, you know, I think I first met you in 2017, 15. I can't remember. It was maybe 15. Yeah, 15, right? Uh, it was blown away, right? From from that, that first encounter was just absolutely blown away. And exactly what you just said, right? That you're, you doing the work that you do is so inspirational to other people. And there have been several times in my own work when I'm like, Ugh, I don't know. And then I honestly will think about you and your work. I'm like, all right, fine, let's go <laughs> and, 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 and do it. Right. And it's amazing. And I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful for whenever I see you move and how you move in community, how you move with the brothers. And, and I love to see the artwork that comes out of it. Now art can really change lives and your, your proof of it. And so it's so beautiful. And so I honor you, my King. I pray that your epic dream absolutely comes true, that I get an invitation. You know, I could invitation. Teach you. You, you're going to be right there with me. It's an invitation for you. You don't get invitation. You just got to be here. Let's get it awesome. done. Let's get it done. That is awesome. You know the thing about it? It's, it's easy to quit doing something. Like anytime something makes us feel like we can't accomplish it. We can just quit it. We can walk away from it. We can throw it away. And I think that's what people have been doing with us yeah. for years. So we have been that discarded thing that everybody kept throwing away. And we couldn't see past that. Our neighborhoods became that. The redlining, the broken windows, the trash, people just throwing stuff in their own neighborhoods. Me, I go and clean stuff up. If something falls on the ground around me, it almost sends me crazy because I don't want that cycle to continue. Because if we keep allowing that stuff to happen, we'll continue being the discarded. And right now, we're on a whole different path right now. So we're picking up right now. Yeah. Yes. That's beautifully said. Beautifully said. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you were with us today. And please stay right there because I want to thank the audience for joining us. I really hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I've enjoyed it. And if there's a positive and successful Black man in your life who you want to see highlighted in this forum, please click the link below or my bio, fill out the nomination form, and we'll take it. Who's down? There are well over 100 <laughs> Black men who are answering these six questions, and it's just been amazing. And I always say success does not mean what someone does for a living. They could be a practicing artist, entrepreneur, community activist, and so much more, film director, all of these things, creative all around. Could be that or not. As long as it's positive and it's legal, I don't care what brother does. I really care about the impact that he's having on his community, starting with the nuclear family and then to the rest of us, the whole community writ large. We want those brothers to contribute also to this repository to open up all of our minds. And so please stay tuned next week for yet another amazing King. And in the meantime, please remember to spread love and have a great day. Thank you so much. And Devin, thank you so much. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad I was here. Thank you. Me too. I thank you. I'm glad you were here too. <laughs> Finally. Finally. That's all I'm going to say. It's you. It's you. <laughs> 